everybody. Make some noise for the Unity North Band. It is so good to see all of you. You look marvelous. Turn to somebody to your left and your right and say, you look marvelous. Each and every one of us is just the way God created us to be. We're going to celebrate that light today, yes? A brand new year, a brand new you, a brand new us. We're going to invite you, if you are so led, to get on your feet and let's start this service with a bang. An old chestnut, an old favorite here at Unity North. I am as God created me. Are you? Say that with me. I am as God created me. In the light, in the love, in the glory. Here we go. I Somebody, you are the way God created you to be. And we're welcoming those of you who are online. Thanks so much for joining us here today. We appreciate you being here and bringing your light into this space. Welcome to all of you online, as well as those in the room. All right, Unity North, have a seat. We got some business to be about. And you're going to have plenty of times to be social throughout the service or after the service. But right now, take a deep breath with me. And on the exhale, remove anything that would keep you from being the light of the world that we know you to be. Another deep breath. And let it, let it all go. There are several things we do at the White Stone Ceremony that are really important to me. And they're, they're nice rituals. And the, the first that we want to do is a, a reading, a poem called Stardust by Nikita Gill. Danielle and I, we're going to invite you into the sanctuary of your own space and your own heart as you close your outer eyes. And as you close your eyes, take another deep breath and be fully present to the miracle of you and the people around you. And then the exhale, there you are in your glory. We have calcium in our bones, iron in our veins, carbon in our souls, and nitrogen in our brains. We are 93% stardust. With souls made of flames, we're all just stars that have people names. The universe wove from you a constellation just so every atom, every fiber in you comes from a different star. Together, you are bound by stardust, all together spectacularly created from the energy of the universe itself. And that, my darling, is the poetry of physics, the poetry of you. Don't ever let other people decide for you who you will be. You have stardust in your spine and veins that flow with galaxies. A whole universe resides within your body. And no one dares to tell a universe what it can and cannot be. You are made of planets and oceans, and no one owns them. Just like no one owns you. The 13 billion year old atoms that make up the seas are the same that run through the bodies of you and me. Our bodies were made to house oceans of galaxies and our souls are rivers that have flowed through centuries. There are two kinds of people who look at the night sky. Those that look up and see a graveyard of stars. And those that look up and see a sea of souls shining brightly to guide us home. 
And so that is our intention for the day. We arise in spirit, in mind, in heart, in truth to allow ourselves to recognize our starness, the spiritual aspect of ourselves that is wholly pure, just the way we were created. We celebrate that this day, and we arise in consciousness to know that we are the manifestation, the revelation of that which is holy and sacred and good and pure. And for this, in advance of all that we do here today, let it live in our cells, let it live in our minds, let it live in our words, our actions, and our songs. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Together, thank, thank you, God. God. And so it is, and so we let it be with a resounding amen. Amen. All right, we're going to do a lot of singing today, so I hope you're in the mood. If you're not, just stand up anyway and move your hips. But I arise, I arise. You are a manifestation, a revelation of God. Up on your feet if you are so led and able. And we got some hands going here. We are rising up in the energy and the divine idea of love expressed in, through, around, and as us. Here we go. I arise. celebrate that truth and you may be seated in love of course we arise in love we are seated in love and we are here today in what in love amen and if you are here today for the first time we are showering you with love just like you are showering us with love we have coming forward our welcome team that have welcome packets and a let's connect card so that let's connect card you can fill out with pen and paper you can scan the qr code and fill it out digitally but we want to stay connected with you we want to continue to shower love on you so in this moment if this is your first time at unity north if you would Raise your hand nice and high in the air so we can start that process. Amen. Thank you for choosing Unity North in the new year. Let's keep your hands up nice and high. We're going to keep the love coming. We want to make sure that we get a welcome packet in your hands before you put your hands down. Thank you again for choosing Unity North. We are full of energy, full of love, and we do make a commitment to continue to shine and rise in love. We have some right back here. Right right Thank you for keeping your hands up and being patient. We love, we love that energy. So we like to say that in... Um, at Unity North, this may be your first time here. You may be a visitor today, but you are family here on out. And Marilyn, you have one right over there. Marilyn, <laughs> you've got one right over here. Beautiful pink scarf. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Amazing, amazing. We got to get more packets for you. We love that. So as we get the new packets, keep a lookout. And we make sure to get them to you. All right, so we have a very special time in our service where we get to know what is going on. What is that special time, folks? It's announcement time. So let's find out what is happening in this amazing community. All right. Before we, before we yeah, go for it. I want to claim something. There are some new people sitting over here that are the, the epitome of courage and strength and tenacity. Said, <laughs> Get me my packet. <laughs> I love that, and I appreciate that, and we will get it into your hand one way or another. That's the enthusiasm that we nurture here. Don't play small. Ask for what you want. Ask for what you need, and the universe, I promise, will provide it. Yes. It is coming. It is on the way. 
And so just while we're, we're waiting on those things that are on the way, just know as you get your welcome packet, that Let's Connect card, if you do fill it out with pen and paper, you can turn it in uh, during the offering later as the baskets come around. That's a way you can turn it in. You can turn it into any of the amazing people that have a How Can I Help badge on as well because we want to make sure we stay connected with you. Look, we made it happen. It's still happening. It's still happening. <laughs> All right, we'll get back to announcements. What is happening today? Today is the singles ministry at 115 in the Peace Chapel and also the Praying Pause service because we love our human friends. We love our animal friends as well. I know it says the labyrinth, but it's really cold outside. Did you notice that? It was really cold outside. Okay, so it's going to be downstairs in Holy Grounds. So praying pause, 2 p.m. at Holy Grounds. Come inside and get warm. So what's happening soon in this community is the Men of Unity are meeting next Saturday. Dances for Universal Peace. We were blessed with that very recently. And they'll be meeting on Saturday. Then next Sunday, the LGBTQ plus and friends ministry is meeting at 1245 and the support group for widows and widowers is also meeting on Sunday. So there is lots happening in this community. We can only fit so much into announcements. So make sure you still go into the app, go on the website and find out more information like finding out about insights into spirituality. This class starts next Wednesday. I feel like when we're in 2023 saying it starts in 2024, oh, it's so far away. No, it's this Wednesday. So <laughs> if you were planning on coming, make sure Wednesday at five, that is on your calendar. And our next announcement is a farewell celebration for Mama Maria, who is leaving, um, who is moving very soon, but we wanna make sure that we celebrate her, celebrate the love that she is and the wonderful human she is. So well, we're also celebrating 98 years young on the planet Amen. before she goes to Hawaii. <laughs> Amen. When I'm 98, I'm going to Hawaii as well. Um, so yes, on Sunday after services, we will have a farewell celebration for her. And in our last announcement, we have our Beyond Fight or Flight class. And again, maintaining peace in the middle of conflict. And it sounds like a really amazing way to start the new year, thinking about peace, knowing that there is conflict. But how do we maintain our inner peace and have that ripple effect on the people around us? So consider that class. It begins on January 22nd, led by our own Reverend Richard and also by Mary Patton. And for today, that concludes our announcement as we shift into the next portion of our service. We shift. How about just a round of applause for this beautiful lady? You know, miracles happen at Unity North. I never thought it would be possible that I would welcome announcements. And Danielle Wright is the angel of the Lord who showed up and said, I kind of have fun with announcements. We've got a lot of music to happen today, but I want to set a, a foundation for the house that we're going to build today. Are you good with that? In the book of Revelation, we read this scripture. Let's go ahead and put the slide up there and let's read it together. Miracles occur. Yes, together we say, to those who overcome will I give a white stone. And in that stone, a new name is written. In ancient times, when a prisoner or any person on the planet was released from bondage of any sort, imprisonment or slavery, they were given two things. First, they were given a white stone, much like the ones that we have here today. A white stone that was a symbol of that freedom. Anytime they were questioned about whether they were a free being, all they did was pull out of their pocket, I'm free. I'm free. And say that with me together today. I'm free. You are free from the judgments and the opinions of anybody in this world, including the stinking thinking in your own brain. We declare that you are free from that, and you're going to have a white stone to prove it, to exclaim, to name, and proclaim to the universe you're not bounded by any limitation. Yes? And it says, in that stone, a new name is written. Metaph metaphysically, that means a new nature, a new way of being, a new way of walking and breathing and contextualizing your life. So today, you're going to be challenged to claim the magnificence of your soul that maybe you had forgotten. That you're not going to be who you have been, but you're going to be who you have always been and forgotten. Yes? Depend on your heart, I know who I am. This stone is a symbol they are no longer defined by any limitation or imprisonment, but by the very nature by which we, you, I, choose to live our lives. The kingdom of heaven has been placed into our hands. 
all the good that you could ever desire is in your heart, in your mind, in this great laboratory here, and this great sanctuary here. And when they, when they marry, you can create heaven on earth. Anybody ever experience heaven on earth? How would you be if after today it got a little bit more heavenly out there? Oh, come on. When somebody asked you, how would you feel if it, life could be a little bit better than it was yesterday? And you go, well, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Think of all the powerful speeches throughout history. Where would we be, when, especially around freedom, if Martin Luther King had said, I have a dream. <laughs> no, you have a dream. You have a vision. There's divine ideas planted in your heart. And you are the only person that can bring that heavenly experience to the earth. And so, yes, the gauntlet's thrown down that you are a creative being created in the image. After the likeness of God, that means you are creative. And today, I want to know what you're creating. Fill in the blank for me. I am creating, and then yell it out. Oh, let, me, let me give you the, you guys ready? <laughs> I am creating. <laughs> we had a whole essay over here with Averill. <laughs> let me give you my list of what I'm creating. And I say, that's a wonderful thing. Have a list of what you were creating. Know that the kingdom of heaven is in your hands, and it's even heaven or hell based on your thinking, good or otherwise. So choice is our greatest power. You know that? That's what we call grace, the choice. My ability to choose my experience, good, bad, or otherwise. You don't like it? Make a different choice. Change your thinking. So we're going to follow in the path of those who have a white stone, a symbol of who they are, living from their magnificence, and we're going to reveal a new name. Some of you came in, you already know what it's going to be for 2024. You've been telling everybody, great, let it go deeper within you. Some of you don't know what is the guiding principle, the divine idea that's going to guide your life through this entire year. We claim that today. Last month, we celebrated the season of light. How many were any, at any of our Hanukkah, Christmas Eve, or Kwanzaa services? We celebrated light. That was the beginning of the journey. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And the first step is always in consciousness. We allowed a light. Bing! A new idea. I'm more than I thought I was. My life can be more than I ever thought it would be. And it was birthed, whether you call it the Christ, whether you call it the light, you call it love, we birthed something in consciousness. Everything in this planet was created twice, first in mind, then in reality. So your freedom was first birthed with the reality that there can be more. And then, just last week, how many people came to the burning bowl? Yeah. We got rid of that which was in the way of bringing from the unmanifest realm into the manifest realm. From the energetic possibility into the manifest realm, we got rid of everything that was in the way of that happening. And that means usually it's the stuff that we're holding, the stories, the judgments, the experiences that we have allowed to anchor us to a limited reality. We burned those last week. And there might be some residue left. There's still some ashes on the floor, actually, I think. But there could be residue in your head. Anybody experience that? You burn it. You walk out the door, and you go out to dinner with somebody, and it's like, there it is again. I just got rid of it. <laughs> There's residue. So we're going to do some letting go today also to get rid of anything that might be left that's going to block you from being the magnificent light of the world that you are. Hand on your heart. I am the light of the world. <laughs> with that releasing, we created a void. We created a vacuum. And the way the universe works, the universe abhors a vacuum. You make a hole. The universe is going to fill it in. It's going to fill it in through you consciously because if you don't, you ever notice that? If you don't fill in your life and define your life, somebody's going to do it for you. I got people in my life that would love to define me if I create a void and I don't fill it. Today at the Whitestone ceremony, we fill that void. We answer that vacuum and we put into the input of this computer and this sanctuary all that is holy and good and wonderful. You see, like phoenixes rising from the ashes, we burned into those ashes, and now the phoenix emerges stronger, more powerful, more beautiful, more wise, more magnificent, more whatever it is that's planted in your heart today, you are more of it today than you've ever been before. And you're going to let that principle and that idea and that word guide you throughout the rest of the year. So we're going to name, claim, proclaim, and exclaim exactly who we are, free. Free 
unbounded, unlimited by any human restriction, judgment, or limitation or experience. Are you really ready to be free? Do you really want to be free of something that has kept you anchored? Then say with me, I know who I am. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to be that person you know yourself to be? Yes. Usually the excitement level goes down. I know who I am. Yes. It's like I said last week. Who wants change? Yes. Who wants to change? <laughs> You're making a commitment today. You are stepping into a commitment, a dedicated perseverance, a tenacity to be all that the universe requires of you to shine all that the universe requires of you to be the light of God, to be the emissary and the ambassador, the testimony to God. That means freedom needs to be grabbed by the horns. Anybody ever know somebody who won the lottery and two years later was broke? The gift was given. The kingdom of heaven was there, and they blew it because they didn't take it, own it, and manage it and maintain it. So freedom is completely useless to you unless you do something with it. That means partnership. We are co-creators. We are working together with the presence of something far beyond the human experience, but ours is to play our part. So many people think we're going to sit there and the universe is just going to play out and take care of business, and they don't do anything. I'm saying it's time to get busy. Let 2024 be a year of busyness, reaching out heart, mind, spirit, soul, and body to meet the presence of God that already knows the end result. But put your body behind the vision and dream. You know, it says in the book of James, faith without works is dead. But let me paraphrase a little bit and say freedom without works is dead. This stone that you're going to get today is completely useless. It's nothing more than a symbol. The ritual that we're going to go through today, a little walk around the room, is completely useless unless it is intentional. It is purposeful. It is a dedicated, this means something that's going on on the inside. This means something that I'm holding about myself on the inside so that the external will match that which I know to be true. And we don't do that halfway. We do it with passion, exuberance, and excitement. So I'm challenging you to suit up today. Suit up, roll up your sleeves, and get in the games. Too many people have been on the sidelines of their life letting the world and its flow, the ebb and flow like a piece of driftwood on the ocean, subject to the whim of everybody else around you. Are you ready for that to stop? Put your stake in the ground and say, I know who I am. So many people look at the ocean and never set sail. Oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. I'm saying today, put your sail up. The winds of God are blowing, unfurl your sails. So many people on the planet are living life as a rowboat, thinking I have to do it all myself. I have to do it all myself, and they get very tired and they quit, and their freedom goes away. I'm saying don't be a rowboat, be a sailboat. There's something moving in the direction of your highest and best. Put up your sails. Any hikers in the room? A lot of people talk about that mountain. That mountain is calling me. I want to go, but boy, my knees are a little old. I'm a little tired. Maybe I'll get to that next week. We have mountains in our emotional experience, our spiritual experience that have been waiting for five years, standing at the door saying, come on up, come on up the mountain. This is the year you climb the mountain. The journey of a thousand miles, whether it be that direction or this direction, is one step up. Today is simply one step, one step in consciousness, one step in purpose to climb the mountain. So I'm asking you to risk. This year, I want you to risk more than you've ever risked. I want you to challenge yourself and those in your environment like you have never challenged before. Let your heart beat in your throat. If your dream and your vision is not causing your knees to knock, it's too small. Uh-oh, it's getting uncomfortable. If your knees are not knocking with the vision of what is being called from you and as you, it's too small. Fear is your partner, not your enemy. Just make sure it's operating at 49% not 51%. Fall down, you're gonna fail. I guarantee you, I can promise you, you're gonna have the freedom and you're gonna drop the rock. You're gonna fall down, you're gonna fail. I'm asking you to fall forward. In 2024, fall forward and pick up the rock and rise again and again and again. We all know this silly adage, but it's so true. Fall down seven times, get up eight. Get up eight. 
Ours on this year is to no longer define ourselves by being on the ground, but by that which we know is true about us spiritually. Yes? Pick up the rocks and be the phoenix and fly. I'm going to invite Tara to come up here. We couple our white stone ceremony, a little different than other churches, with a walk of transformation ritual. We used to have arches that we'd put up here, but now the human arches are what we use. Human consciousness beholding you. Look around the circle. These are your co-creators. These are your partners in believing. And when you're on the ground, they're going to be there to help you get up. Because they know that when they're on the ground, you're going to be there to help them up. Look across the circle, put your hand on your heart, and say, we are co-creators to somebody. We are partners in believing. We are the ambassadors of courage. And then go ahead and make eye contact with somebody and say, I've got your back. Find somebody else. Look them in the eye and say, we're in this together. We use as the mantle for our walk today the phrase, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Say that with me. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everything starts in consciousness. Let your mind be so centered and so focused on the partners in believing in this room, on the magnificence that's being called from you, that life begins to change. It's already manifesting differently. Family's going to show up differently this year. It may not be immediate but you're going to be convicted when they fall down. You'll be there to pick them up. So before we get into that ritual, Terry has got a beautiful song that I've never heard before called Rise. I absolutely loved it. Picture yourself in your failures. Picture yourself at the precipice of what life is calling you to be and make this song your own. We need some help here. I've been staring at the coastline Thinking of every choice I've made To lead me right back now Standing on solid ground And I've been hiding in the shadows Wondering if I'm on the right road Someplace I've never been Is this how it all begins?
Have a seat. And everyone say after me, you're going to see me rise. I want you to bring to mind every obstacle, every person who ever stood in your way. Every person who ever, ever, ever put you down and said you could not achieve every dream you ever had. And I want you to look them in the eyes right now and say, you're going to see me rise. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm a little afraid now. My heart's going boom, 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 boom. You're going to see me rise. Any obstacle, internally or externally, I want you to look him square in the eyes with all the love you have and say, you're going to see me rise. Together. You know, the gifts of God are always available, but we must rise to claim them. We must rise to own them. Ours is to move internally and yes, externally. Our fifth unity principle, you got a beautiful body. Look at that beautiful body. It is a gift of God, use it. Use it, that is the co-creative process. You have to rise and internally and externally accept them. Ours is to rise intentionally, purposefully, and mindfully in the direction of your highest good as partners in believing. Two stories I like to tell before we get into the ritual today. Two of my favorite stories from the Bible. The first is the pool of Bethesda. Anybody, if you've been here in Whitestone before, you know the story, but it bears repeating. There's a pool in Jerusalem. It's got no water in it anymore. But supposedly, the water had healing properties in this pool. The angels would come down and they would move the water a little bit. They'd put their toe in the water and wiggle it. And the first person who got to the pool was healed. The first person. That's a limited consciousness, isn't it? But the angel stirred the water, and the first person in. There was a man who was there for 38 years. Picture that time, 38 years. Wanting to get in there to heal himself of his crippled or whatever malady he happened to have. 38 years, the pool would stir, and somebody always beat him to the pool. And up, oh, I'm not first again, I'm second, I'm last. And for 38 years, he was a victim to his circumstances externally. And then Jesus comes along, our master teacher, our way shower, our elder brother, and he asks the, the, the pertinent question, well, do you really want to be healed? Do you really want to be healed? And I ask you that question today. Do you really want life to be better than it is? Many people are walking the planet really okay with their victimhood. They're really comfortable there, and they get their needs met in their victimhood. And so the Christ is asking you today, do you really want to be healed? Do you really want to be better? And of course, the guy goes, duh. Well, of course I do. And then Jesus, being the master of tough love, says it clearly. Then take up your mat and walk. Take up your mat and walk. What Jesus is saying to the man is quit giving your power away to angels. Quit giving your power away to water in a pool. Quit giving your power away to the people who beat you to the water. Quit giving your power away to your experience, your past, and your history, and own your life. Own your life. That's what we're being called today to do. When you make the walk here in a minute, is to own your life. He's saying right now, stop defining yourself by limitation and start defining yourself as the healthy, vibrant, abundant, and powerful being of light you have always been. Stop defining yourself as a victim, and you may have had the worst possible life up to this moment, but it does not and will not define you. So I don't begin to diminish the pain that anyone in this room went through. Let's get clear there. But my job as a minister is to behold you as the light of the world and to lift you up any time I get a chance as your co-creator, as your partner in believing. And this moment right now, 2024, January 7th, can be the moment you no longer define yourself by those circumstances, but only by the magnificence of your very soul. Yes? yes. For that man at the pool, 38 years of pain was erased. You know, he carried it for a long time. Some of us are carrying stuff. A little glass of water. It's not very heavy, is it at all? Not heavy at all, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for five years, for 10 years. And many of us are living very crippled up on the inside because we've carried a story for a very long time. I'm saying, give it up. Give up whatever story you are still telling from 50 years ago. 
because it's dragging you down. Give up whatever story you started telling five minutes ago. Give it up. Take up your mat and intentionally walk. The second story I like to tell is the story of the prodigal son. A little more familiar to most of us, yes? Two brothers and the father, which represents the energy of life itself. Life and love and God and whatever you want to call it. And the younger one, like many of us do, say, I want my inheritance. Give me what is my due. And a lot of people in New Thought are living that. I want my due. I want abundance. I want the prosperity gospel. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. And they don't know how to manage it spiritually. Well, the prodigal son, the young one, gets all his inheritance. The father freely gives. Gives, here you go. It's yours. The kingdom of heaven has been placed into your hand. And you're either consciously managing that kingdom of heaven or you're going to sleep and you're squandering it. So he went out into the world and he squandered it on, on loose women, booze. I don't know what he squandered it on. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But a lot of us have squandered our power. I can't believe I said loose women. <laughs> Maybe it was loose men. But the re you know, in my job, sometimes I get up here, and when I get going and I get off that script, you wonder why I have notes. It's because my mouth is very dangerous off script. Apologies for anybody who was offended. But the reality is that we've been given this magnificent, we walk into a unity church and say, wow, I can create heaven, and then we squander it because we go to sleep. Well, the prodigal son ends up hanging out with the pigs. All the money's gone. All the loose men and women are gone. All the parties have stopped. And there I am with the pigs. And anybody of a Jewish tradition knows that this is the lowest of the low. This is lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. A wagon rut. Hanging out with the pigs, eating the pig slop. It does not get any lower. Anybody ever feel like that you've been there? I've been there a couple of times. I define my life by what I learned in that moment about myself. We see, we like to think it's all about the celebrations and the good and the happiness that define us. It's the dark night of the soul that makes us the people that we are. And what happens in that moment for the prodigal son, my favorite line in scripture, it says, he came to himself. Say that with me. Hand on your heart, say, I come to myself today. Really? And you know who you are. Are you coming to your divine nature? The parts that have been forgotten. The parts that feel like they're broken. There's no, nobody broken in here. Not one of you is broken. You've just forgotten today. Whitestone is a service of remembrance. Yes? He remembered. In Luke chapter 15, he remembered who he was. And it didn't matter how low he had been. It didn't matter how he screwed up in the past. And he says, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to fall at my father's feet, and I'm going to be a servant to the father. Again, the father represents God, life, love. And what does the father do? Come on in, son. You're not going to be my servant. Welcome to the home. Welcome back. You remembered who you were. Thank God. I always knew who you were, but you'd forgotten. And I love to tell the story of my friend Michael Moran, who was in trouble as a teenager, sitting inside a jail cell for the third time, and his mother came to him, sat on the other side of the bars. She said one thing. I don't know who you're pretending to be, but I know who you are. And when you figure it out, I'll be back. And she left him there for three days. Some of us have been in prison for three years, for three lifetimes. And when we figure out who we are, the prison doors open. When we figure out who we are, we're no longer eating with the pigs because the universe, it is the good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God knows nothing of your mistakes. There's no person in the sky keeping a record to say, well, you will pay karma for your mistakes. God doesn't, life doesn't work that way. You're one choice, one choice away from changing the entire direction of your life. And that means coming to myself. I remember who I am. And so I'm going to ask the chaplains to create that walkway, the prodigal son's walkway. They're going to line up here in the middle of the room and create a, a tunnel of consciousness. You can do that. Now. They're reluctant. They're like, is now? Is it now? It's now. The universe knows nothing of your limitations, your doubts, and knows only of your light. We're going to take the same walk that the prodigal son took. We're going to take the same walk 
that those who said, take up your mat and walk, called us to live. In this line, these people are here for one purpose. Scoot in a little bit. I want it to be a little bit more womb-like. This is a birthing canal. These people are the doulas and the midwives of your birthing. And for the record, so we don't repeat last year's um, getting out of here at 1.30, your job as you walk through here is not to go, oh my God, Judy, I haven't seen you for so long. How are you? <laughs> and and they, they all have orders here to not say anything except an affirmative statement about you, what they see in you and behold in you. Do not grab their hands. They may have their eyes closed. They represent the birthing canal of you as the prodigal daughter. You as the prodigal son coming home to who you have always been. Are we clear about that? I have lunch at 2.30. No. As you take the same walk that these prodigal son and the man at the pool took, let every step be in the direction of your highest expression. Let every breath be in the a breath that takes you deeper and deeper to the reality of who God created you to be. I am as God created me to be, and so are you, just the way God created you to be. And you arise today as a revelation and a manifestation of God. Let every step be in the direction of your new life, your new expression, every heartbeat, a step more empowering than the last one. You see, if you do ritual for ritual's sake, you don't even bother. You're wasting your time. I'm going to ask you to walk in the sanctuary. whoop de doo No, no, no. I'm asking you to walk into the magnificence of 2024 and what this year is holding for you and what this ministry holds for you and what God holds for you. And when you come up, I've got five tables up here. I'm going to invite you to not do a typical new thought thing is let me do six incantations and four dances to get the right stone. Maybe it's over here in this one. To just know as you walk to whatever table you go to the stone that has your nature, your divine idea, the vibration of your existence is going to jump out quickly. And then I want to invite you to stand there for a second and just hold space for the person who's coming up behind you because this is a co-creative process. And just say before they pick up their stone, I know who you are. I know who you are because we're in this together, folks. Yes? Nobody here is alone. And so when you get your stone, step aside Welcome somebody else up there and just let them know that you know who they are. You're being asked to leave on one side of this portal, this birthing canal, who you have been so that you may be all that the universe has intended for you. Coming home to the truth of your divine perfection. Let it be more than a compulsory task. Let it be an actual birthing. And it may have taken you nine months to get here. It may have taken you a lifetime to get her. I don't care how long it took because at the other side of that, the universe is going, welcome home, welcome home. I know who you are. You're energetically extending an invitation to the universe that you're willing to change at depth. I want you to hear that. Moving through here, as you get the affirmations, soak in, soak them in. Let them live in you. You're extending an invitation to the universe that says, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to be me. Once you're complete, you'll make your way. So you'll enter from the back through here. You'll go back around this way. We don't need any Atlanta traffic here today. Around the back and get back to your seat. You're going to be released by the ushers. Jim has got a method. He says, assures me that it's going to work. He will release you by rows. And then once you're tapped, that is the angel of the Lord saying, now is your time. Your time has come. Jim Sanford, the angel of God, says, it is now your time. We are going to be singing and chanting during this time. I invite you to sing with us or to simply be present to the miracle of those that are still being birthed or to simply hold that divine idea that's making its way into your mind and into your heart. Take a deep breath with me, everybody. At the end of this birthing, we'll have a meditation. Oh, looks like it started. Here we go. Take a deep breath, everybody, and let's sing. I am divine. Let's bring the lights down a little bit. God lives in me as me.
and behind you, the energy and the truth. I know who you are. one of us serve as the sanctuary of truth, as a temple of choice, the temple of the eyesight of the Christ, that each one of us serve for those that are going through this portal as the ambassador of God, seeing and claiming and knowing each person as they make their way through as the presence of love in form the courage and ability to do whatever is theirs to do in the new year. I know who you are. We sing. I am divine. God lives in me as me. And I can Those who are waiting for your turn and those who have already had a turn, put your hand upon your heart and say with me, I am more. I am more. I am more than I have ever been. I am more than I have ever been. I am more than I have ever known. I am more than I have ever known. In God's light. In God's light. In God's love. In God's love. I am more. I am more. Let us hold a sacred blanket around all as we sing. I am more, I am more, I am more than I have ever known in God's light, in God's love, I am more. Please join us as you are led. I am 
of the presence of God, each one as you was a chaplain today, the space of perfection, the space of health and abundance and well-being, peace and harmony. And as you hold it for each individual, let us know together that we are more, we are more, we are more, we are more, we are more than partners in believing each one of us is an angel with skin on for those around the room who are about to embark upon a hero's journey to be more than they've ever been before we claim it with them we see it with them we know it for them and when they fall we help them up and that's a reciprocal energy they know it for us they claim it for us and when we fall, they will be there to help us. Sit for a moment in the silence before the next chant begins. Feel the tangible energy of God's presence here, now, as you as me, as us, as the world, in the silence. Taking that stone, those who have it already, and placing it on your heart. I follow my vision, I follow it through. Say that with me. I follow my vision, I follow it through. That which was planted in your mind is a divine appointment. The vision for what life can be is not there by accident. It is a divine appointment of God meeting God, light meeting light and love meeting love. And you jump from the precipice take the step with the willingness to change and to grow as you follow that vision I follow my vision I follow it through I follow my vision I follow it through I change I follow my vision, I follow it through. I know who you are. I follow my vision, I follow it through. I follow my vision, I follow it through. I change, I grow, 
have always been. I know who you will always be. And as you follow your vision, I am there beside you. presence of God. Those of you who have already walked and gathered your stone, live in the energy and the vibration of that which is emerging and hold that space for everybody else in this room. And we sing again. I follow my vision. I follow it through. I follow my vision. into silence in the place of knowing that transcends words and music the place of presence the place of being and any of that residue that might be coming up that we talked about now is the time to let it go to change to grow in the silence Again, with your hand on your heart and the white stone close. Reaffirm with me, I know who I am. Together. I know who I am. Again. I know, I know who, who I, I am. am. And one more time. I, I know who I am. Each one of us is the presence of love, and we are awakening to the presence of love, doing business as you as me, as us. I invite you to sing these, these words with us. I am awakening to love. I am changing 
awakening. this time, I invite you to adjust your posture in your chair. Take a moment. Let your feet become grounded against the floor. Adjust your spine so that you are comfortable, yet sitting tall. Stretching the crown of your head gently upward to the heavens. Be aware of your body. Be aware of the ability to move your body. But also be aware of this deliberate entrance into stillness. Feel your body in stillness. Then to the best of your ability, and you cannot do this wrong, begin to see yourself surrounded by four walls. Again, your image might be very clear or it might be a little mottled. These walls represent the prison that has held you captive. These walls represent what you are willing to leave behind as you begin this journey. Take a moment, look at them, touch them, feel them. Become fully grounded in this vision. And now there's the first wall and it's right in front of you. It's the strongest. Touch it, notice its texture. This wall represents self-doubt. Any lack of belief in yourself or your abilities, any thoughts of I can't, or I'm not good enough, smart enough, or whatever enough. That's not the truth of you, and you know it. Put all of that knowing of the truth of your nature into your body right now. Take a deep breath in, and with a big exhalation, one mighty blow, push that wall over. Beautiful. See how it just falls back into nothingness from whence it came. Now, you choose. Turn to the second wall. Again, you cannot do this wrong. Now you're beginning to feel empowered. The second wall represents the limiting opinions of others, the things you let seep into your consciousness about what others have told you that wasn't true, and you began to unconsciously accept as a limitation on yourself. Today, you feel the strength in your body, in your veins. You take another deep breath in, and when you exhale, push it over again. Push the wall down. Now you are free from the desire from external validation. See how much more easily this wall 
has fallen over. And now turn again. Find the third wall. You begin to notice its flimsiness. And this wall, again, is self-constructed of fear. This is the wall of trepidation or hesitation. In this moment right now, surrounded by friends and family, you feel yourself as pure energy with will, with power and faith to move forward, with courage, strength, and tenacity. Right now, see yourself as committed, dedicated, and unafraid. And again, take a deep breath in, exhale, and push the wall and see how it just so easily falls down. And now turn one final time. In your mind's eye, see the fourth wall. It's decrepit, it's barely standing up. Without the support of the others, this is going to be almost effortless. This is whatever external obstacle is in your way of expressing fully your destiny as a child of God, as the divine itself. This wall represents any person or situation that you perceive is blocking you from your greater good. But again, it's so weak and insignificant now. Just take a breath in, exhale, and you can just flick it or even blow it over. It just dissolves right in front of your eyes. Feel your body again. Feel the spaciousness. Feel the spaciousness at a cellular level. Keep breathing deeply. Feel the freedom with every breath. The freedom to manifest your heart's desires. Now, now it's time for you to leave your prison behind and walk into the light of spiritual radiance that you are. Take the white stone in your hand. Feel its texture, its hardness, its coolness. Again, your feet are grounded in the floor. You are grounded in your true nature. Shift your attention to your heart center and place the stone against your heart. Say inwardly to yourself, I am free. Again, say inwardly from your heart's mouth, I am unlimited. And finally, say to yourself, I behold myself as the radiant expression of goodness and oneness that I am. Hear, hear that voice inside of you, the voice that claims yourself as the very quality you seek. This is the voice of the I am, the I am that knows you and can live from the energy of this point. Let us move into a moment of silence. Listen for a few moments as you breathe and let the voice bring forth your new name. Remain in that space.
Continue listening into the silence. The silence that's one and the same as the center of consciousness. The silence that holds your true name. Notice the smoothness of the breath. Feel the stillness of the body. Bring back the truth of your nature as you gently open your eyes. You may have, you know, already realized that ballpoint pens are not going to write on polished rocks very well. I invite you to go home and get a Sharpie and write it on that stone. Get a permanent marker and put it somewhere in your house as a reminder. Because if you're like me, you're going to forget. Maybe next week, next month, you'll forget. Put it somewhere in a prominent place that you are constantly reminded of how we see you, of how God sees you, of how you have seen yourself. There are two different ways that we can go about this because everyone's going to ask you, what did you get? What'd you get? What's your word? What's your name? And both are equally as powerful. One is go ahead and tell them. Tell everybody. And don't play small. This is who I am in 2024. This is who I'm choosing to be. And I want you to be a partner in believing with me. And the other is to live your life in such a way that nobody has to ask you what your word is because it is exuded from your being, your actions, your words, and your life in such a way that everybody already knows. But I'm going to give us the opportunity to proclaim it to the heavens right now. This is one of my favorite moments in the new year. It's I am, and then we're going to fill in the blank, and we're going to do it three times, and each time progressively more enthusiastic, more passionate, more convicted, and more committed than the last. So I'm going to count the three, and I am, and to scream to the heavens and to the entire earth who you are choosing to be. Or if you want to be silent, just go ahead and be silent. But on the count of three, and we'll do this three times. You ready? No holding back. You can't do this halfway. One, two, three. I am. Nice rehearsal. Get up on your feet if you are able and led. I wanted to reach clear around the earth and come back to you. Amplify it and increase times a thousand. One, two, three. I am. One, two, three. Now look across the circle and say, you are, and put in your words. One, two, three. And raise your hands to the heavens and say, we are, and fill in the blank together, we are. And so we conclude the ceremony with the chant, I am free, I am unlimited, there are no chains that bind me. Look at the words up on the screen there. They're on the back screen too if you've got a crick in your neck from looking sideways. And let's just claim the truth for us and the freedom for all people as we sing. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited. Right here, I... Go ahead and join hands as we sing. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. hands up high. We are free. We are unlimited. There are no chains that bind us. We are free. We are unlimited. Right here, right now. We are free. We are unlimited. There are no chains that bind us. We are free. the freedom that we all have spiritually and otherwise. 
So my friends, we want, you may be seated. We want to take that same energy into offering time. Um, last year, my word was abundance, and I learned about abundance of love and abundance of strength and energy that is present in me, but also present in this community. So can we share some abundance of love with our prayer chaplains who held so much space for us today and every Sunday? Thank you so much. So we know that we've got our ushers coming forward with our offering baskets. And when they start going around the room, we know we can give in person. We can scan the QR code and we can give online. And everything that we give, all of that prosperity, all of that abundance is seen and appreciated. And before that goes around, we've got a little word about our holiday match coming up. Please welcome Sylvie John. Thank you, guys. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the chair of the lead of the prosperity team here at Unity North. And it's my honor to share with you um, our progress report and your last opportunity, your last blessing that this week to donate. We have our holiday match, and we had a handful of angels that all together, a very small number, donated $40,000 to set off our challenge. That's, the, that's, that's, that's half of the good part. The other good part is that we are 7,000 shy, and we anticipate meeting that challenge of doubling it this week. So for those of you that haven't yet given, we'd like to not only meet our goal of 80,000, but we'd like to do like we did last year and supersede that with $100,000. So if you have an envelope, you do have an envelope, a Christmas match envelope in the seat pocket in front of you. And if you'll get that out and not... Uh, if you haven't yet given, please consider donating to match our $40,000, put it in the, um, the basket when it comes around. This is, of course, in addition to what you normally donate. I did want to share with you also that I have a word for unity. I picked up a stone just for unity, and the word that I'm putting out on behalf of the prosperity team is generosity, abundance, and overflowing. You might say those are synonyms. Richard used a phrase that we manage it spiritually. We manage it spiritually. And your board manages our funds spiritually. And what we do, just for those of you that may not be aware, we donate so much outside of this church based on what you give. We give to so many organizations, and you can read it on this placard in your seat pocket. So what you give goes out into the community to help this church be abundant and sharing to our community, internally and externally. So please take this opportunity to share what you have with this church so we can share it with others. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. And as I invite Tara up, we are going to proclaim and assert and affirm that we are blessed. So let us say our offering blessing together. I am so blessed. I am so prosperous. And it is my great pleasure to share of my blessings and to share of my prosperity. And in the giving, the entire world is blessed. Thank you, God. And in this song, we get to assert that this is me, whether it's abundance or prosperity, whatever it is that we claim, this is me. And there's going to be a part for each and every one of you. It's simple lyrics. It's just as oh, 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 oh. When Danielle and I sing the oh, 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 that's your part to sing with us. Don't hold back. I'm going to Once point again, to you whenever it's your turn, and you're going to sing with, with Richard and, and uh, Danielle. Let's kick it off. All right. stranger to the dark hide away they say cause we don't want your broken parts learn to be ashamed of all my scars run away they say no one will love you as you are but I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us for we are glorious. When the sharpest words want to cut me down, I'm going to send a flood, going to drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I meant. 
to be this is me look out cause here I come and I'm marching on to the beat I drum I'm not scared I make no 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 apologies there you go. this is me Give me one more. Oh, 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 this is me. Happy New Year, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Being you, you are the way God created you to be.